Hello. I have no idea what I'm doing. I think I'm going to rotate. Yeah, there it is. So as I'm live, decided that the Facebook was the only way I could do a live thing. And all three people that might be watching this at this time will just say, hey, it's a very modest seed of planting. I don't know. But here she is. Camper that we got. I'm going to go around it and um, show you the outside while telling you the story. I think the door. Okay, so my boys have both graduated high school. Oh, my boys have graduated high school. And it was time for me to start thinking about me a little bit. My roles here at the Trim Fort have uh, dwindled. And so I needed to start thinking about me. I'm trying to figure out what did I do before I had a family. And I started thinking about myself. And I went to college to be in ministry, one of the things I did. And I don't always have a place to go and prepare myself. And things have happened in the last couple of years that um, have kind of mushroomed in my spiritual walk with the Lord. Trials and happy times. And so I needed a place to go. So I started looking for a camper of some sort. Um, and... It was kind of a miracle that I even found this one. But anyway, I found this camper. It was kind of a miracle that I even found it to begin with. And um, as I was going through different websites and such, um, it, I scrolled through different people who was, were selling them, uh, like dealerships. And I landed on this one and started scrolling through their offerings. And I found this little girl for only $1,000. And um, I gave him a call, and he said that he had just recently um, lowered the price. He was off wanting to sell it for 2500 These little babies are in high demand because people want to restore them and sell them for five figures. Well, I'm not sure if this little girl will ever get, get to that position, but um, it's not what I have in mind for it anyway. And in fact, when he... Um, when we were talking about it, he asked me what I wanted it for, and I said, I want it to be a sanctuary. And in fact, when um, I was coming out here earlier to go to my space, I called it as I had my Bible and whatever and going out, and Kelton goes, you're going to your God hut? <laughs> and I said, okay, yeah, I'm going to my God hut. So this is where I'm going to um, remove myself from all the cares of the world and get myself refocused and get myself uh, pumped up in the spiritual realm so that I can go slay those giants, right? And so we had this conversation, the, me and the dealer. Um, I didn't think much about his name. His last name was the same name as um, somebody who Rick had gone to flight school with um, in the Army National Guard who actually became his boss until he just recently retired about three or, three years ago or so. And so Friday came along. Um, I couldn't get to um, where he was until Friday. And he said, well, we'll hold it here for you. And then Friday, Friday came along, and I had a conversation with him. And I go, is she still there? He goes, yep, she's still here. I got other people wanting to look at it. But I said, you had first dibs. And I'm going, all right, great. I'll be there at 2 o'clock. And so my sister-in-law, Tamara, who you saw in the picture, um, hopped in the car with me to go take a look at her and in the process of me thinking about this whole thing and what the amount was for selling it I started praying about it and um, I really felt like in my heart I couldn't offer him less or more than $900 so here's the backstory on the number nine every month every year I ask the Lord to give me a word for the year a word for the month and they are in association with this um, biblical numerology. Um, if you study the Bible at all, God repeats multiple different numbers. Seven is a perfect number. Three represents the Trinity, um, the Godhead. Uh, and number nine represents the fruit of the Spirit. There's nine fruits of the Spirit. This is significant for the story. So just keep that in mind. And I wasn't thinking about all that when I was looking for this thing. But when I flipped over in my prayer journal 
for the month of July. There was actually a nine for that month. And so that's the number that I associate my word for the for the month that, you know, I go to the scriptures and I find a word that's associated with the number nine and that has to do with growth. It has to do with fruit of the spirit. Um, so that sort of thing. And um, so I felt like because that was the month that I was going to really work on this. And this is the transformation month of July that it had to be nine was significant. So I didn't even take more than $900. I didn't know for sure if I was gonna share how much I got it for, but to me, it's very significant. The number nine represents spiritual growth and fruit. And so um, I, when we got up there on Friday, I'm telling you something on the outside because when we go in, there's gonna be reasons why I tell you. When we go up there, um, Friday, I had the, that conversation. He goes, well, have to, he's my nephew. I didn't tell you that part. He's his nephew. Good friend of Rick's is the nephew of the gentleman who had this on hold. He had it on hold for three years. He purchased it from the previous owners and he was planning on restoring it, but he said he was getting too old for such things. And so he held on to it for three years, listed it. It just sat there at the price and he just lowered it. I was, had to have been the first person to see it at the reduced price. And so um, I just, it, the timing of everything was just so meticulously perfect, perfect. And so we get up there and I go in mind that if I'm only going up there, I, I understand he can't accept it if it's too low. I've had a great day with my sister-in-law otherwise. So anyway, we get up there and he opens this door and I kid you not, when he opened this door, whew, I feel it even now. I had to take a step back because I could feel the spirit to come right into me. It was so powerful that I even took a step back and I was overwhelmed with the spiritual, whatever you want to call it, just a big whew, cloud of beautifulness. And when I was looking at the pictures online, I'm going to flip it back around. I see this mm -hmm. picture right here. And in my imagination, I see a lady sitting here in her apron with her Bible out. And when I was having the conversation with the dealer, and when I went to go look at this camper and I saw him, he was exactly what I was imagining him to look like. I mean, it was as though I had already seen him in my imagination and it was exactly who, I mean I, the first thing out of my mouth was I had pictured him to be and so I didn't think much of that until he opened the door and all the spiritual stuff hit me I know some people are going to think I'm crazy but so it makes me feel like what I saw in my imagination was reality because when I stepped in here all the hairs on my arms just stood on end and it makes me imagine that whoever was sitting here was um that was a real thing in my imagination. Anyway, um, it's a time of growth and I cannot offer you less. And he said, you know what, since you know my nephew and blah, 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 I'm going to let you have it. And boy, it was just such an incredible experience. His, um, his associate helped me get this thing fixed up, even down to the detail of the hitch fitting. It was the perfect size hitch. Anyway, okay, moving on. Anyway, I'm going to show you now. So this is really cool. It is a gas. There's a cabinet there, sink, refrigerator. Look how clean that is. I can't even believe it. Of course, it is rotting off, <laughs> and we left the tarp off of it. I wanted to see if there was any live leaks. Well, there is. He said he had, you know, sealed it up, but not quite. It's just still a wreck. But, um, yeah, I'm hopeful. <laughs> it will be restored. I just know I can do it. But this is really cool. Nice big stove got a little medicine cabinet here these go up I assume I haven't figured out too much and then I can't imagine somebody actually sleeping up there but I think that's what they used to do way back in the day I've seen pictures of babies sleeping in the back dash of a car while driving way back before they realized people needed seat belts look at this there's a radio how cool is that there's actually a an antenna in the outside on the back. So this is just super, super cool. I was in here snooping. Actually, I was in here sitting 
in my new space, contemplating things. And last Sunday, uh, Pastor Kerry preached about Martha. And I was sitting here thinking about that sermon, and I needed to establish some boundaries in life. I used, usually refer to myself as a Martha, but I realize that Martha is only good if you actually put boundaries. I realize that I have actually caused people to become dependent on me because of my Marthaism. And it's time for me to um, reflect on that. I might have already damaged my boys because they might have become too dependent on me. People try to tell me along the way. But if you do too much for those kiddos, they're not going to be strong enough to fend for themselves. And now I'm just kind of like throwing them out. <laughs> not really, but um, it's time for you to learn some things that I should have taught you way before. Um, it's not good being a perfectionist. Uh, things can go wrong occasionally. And it's okay not to fix everything. And I'm afraid I might be learning this lesson a little too late. But um, I'm finding myself, you know, if you do things too much for other people, you're saying that they can't do things on their own, that they're not strong enough or smart enough to figure things out. And this is a relatively new epiphany for me. And I am somebody who wants to help to a fault. And I will bend over backwards to help you. Um, there's a boundary there that shouldn't be crossed because what you're doing is causing dependency. You're causing, um, I'm referring to my children to a certain degree to you're encouraging a narcissistic mentality that the world re revolves around them. And, Oh, I might've done some things wrong, but I'm trying to rectify now. And, um, Oh, well, it's hopefully God will work it all out in the end. Who knows? But, um, it, that whole sermon, I was sitting out here, Thinking about that sermon about, um, you know, sometimes you just need to spend time at God's feet. And that's exactly what this camper is all about for me. It's about disconnecting. It's about um, looking at what the Lord wants to teach me. Don't worry so much about other people and everybody else's business, but just sit at his feet. And that's what this camper is all about. And um, anyway, I was out here sitting about that. And then I started daydreaming about the motif. I'm going to use this little bookmark for inspiration. I want to keep it true to what it is um, for the era that it's in. So I want to do some oranges and some turquoise and um, other things. Hello. And no boys are allowed. It's just for me. No, not really. If they want to help, anybody who wants to help me um, re uh, restore this, you're very free to help. However, only certain things are allowed in this camper. And I was about to get to that point. I was sitting here thinking that this is a time of growth for me. And the only things that are allowed in this space are the fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long suffering, mm -hmm. gentleness, mm -hmm. goodness, et cetera, et cetera. And I was thinking how I could represent that in this space. And I was trying to figure out what fruit most associates itself with you know, the different fruit of the spirit, like immediately I thought of the strawberry, that's going to be love for sure. And I was sitting here chewing on that a little bit. And then I landed on, on lemons and, and I thought, well, that's joy. That would be good for joy. And that was the last thought I had about the fruit of the spirit. And then I started going around looking at stuff in the camper and I found the previous owner's um, uh, registrations. And you guys are not going to believe this. There were two previous owners. And I won't hold them up because you won't be able to see them anyway. But the very first owner, and up until um, the issue date was 78, was Merlin and Martha. And if that wasn't stunning enough remember how i said the last thing i thought about was joy the next registration comes from there's only initials ch and joy which i thought was absolutely stunning and so if one thing wasn't enough there's a whole bunch of other things that this is just i feel like a god thing and so i know that only more exciting things are going to happen along the way and so I look forward to documenting them and showing y'all the journey mm -hmm. and how it's all, all going to transpire. But when I see things like, like that, 
Oh. I don't know what I've gotten myself into. So I have waves of, here we go, we got this, we're going to get this done, and what in the world am I doing? So I know that I do need help with electrical. So if anybody wants to be a part of this journey and wants to help me with the electrical, I would very much accept that help. Uh, that broom was original. That was already in here. I put in that uh, the Scoopy thingamabob. But anyway, this is going to be awesome. And I'm keeping these. These are the only things that I'm going to wash out and not fall apart. But it's the same, same color I'm going to end up with. So... I've got all the aesthetics in mind and ready to go, but who knows about the rest. But I know I'm rambling. It's a live thing, but at least it's done 